Hello, YouTube. Thought I'd do a quick video here. Yes, uh, I'm going to do a review video, in-depth, close-up look. We're going to pull the cover off this Bridgecom repeater. We're going to look inside. Um, I know there may be videos out there that already did this, but I'm going to do it with this repeater. What we have here today, if you're new to this video, is the Bridgecom two-way radio repeater. You can get this in the GMRS version. You can get it in the ham version and probably the business band version, although I didn't check their website to confirm that, but I'm going to assume that. Um, this model I have here on the bench is the BCR40DU. Uh, the D stands for the duplexer. When um, Mark got this repeater, thanks again, Mark, for me borrowing this repeater, uh, he wanted the duplexer to be included and they tuned Bridgecom tuned the duplexer to the frequency you wanted to use to get the best performance um, so that's why this is the DU model now the case that this is in is actually the BCR 40 U model the difference like I said is the D version comes with the duplexer the U version does not now if you're wondering why there is tape on here uh, it is to cover up Mark's call sign and Mark's repeater name for his privacy. This uh, model can be a base station. You can plug in a microphone here. This is where the programming cable also hooks up. There's a button here that says base you can press. Or if you don't want to use the base station, you can use the repeater uh, button. I don't have the microphone for this, so we have it in repeater function. This also lets you monitor when it's in repeater mode the traffic on the repeater it does have a built-in speaker there is a volume control here that you can adjust and you can uh, turn off the speaker uh, by pressing this mon button uh, and the little musical note goes away this is a channel selector it lets you select what channel channel one channel two whatever you want to do however you set up when you program it now i will have to admit the programming software for Bridgecom, for this particular model at least, works very well. Um, I've used many different uh, programming softwares from, you know, from handhelds to repeaters, and it seems like I always got to tinker with it. I got to restart the program. It didn't detect the COM port. I got to redo, you know, monkey around with it. No, not Bridgecom. You plug in their cable. You find out what COM port you're on. You start the programming software, you select what COM port you're on, you hit read, do your, uh, uh, you know, read from the repeater, you do your editing, and you hit write, uh, boom, simple. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I don't know. There's a lot of videos out there. I think Bridgecom even has some videos on their website on how to program it. But their software works very well. It's very fast. I haven't had any, not one error whatsoever. So it's kind of neat. Uh, how their software works now their software doesn't when you do the wattage in their software it's not the way you think it is it's not one watt two watt you know three watt it's it's a number i don't know if it's percentages or what what they do but it's it's a number and what i mean by that is if i want to use this full power i got to enter in 745 uh number now the, there's two mobile radios in here, uh, and they're rated for 40 watt radios. I'm, I'm going to show you the, the insides here in a little bit, uh, but they're rated for 40 watts. That's what the sticker says. Um, now I know you're probably asking, can you do more than 40 watts? Well, yes, you can. Um, you can do up to 48 watts coming out of the, out of the duplexer, although that is not recommended because the radios are only rated for 40 watts and the duplexer it's probably only a 40 watt duplexer um the, the duplexer is smaller than my 50 watt so i'm just assuming it's going to be a 40 watt duplexer I'll, again i'll show you that here in a minute um but yeah this the front panel is pretty simple um you know you, you can program it so channel one can be a certain wattage channel two uh, can be another wattage, different frequency. There's a lot of lot of ways that t you can set this repeater up. I just have it so that, and also this repeater's got built-in uh, repeater ID. You can enter in your call sign. It automatically converts it to Morse code. So you can have it. In my case, I believe channel one 
is with the CW on, with the repeater ID on, on low power, 10 watts. Now, for low power to do 10 watts, I believe you got to enter in a value of 300. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why would you want to lower the number? Why not just run it at the full power? What's the point? Well, there's a couple reasons why you might run low power. One is, if you're experimenting with something, like with antennas, there's no need to run it at full power. Um, two, if you get this repeater set up, and let's say you only need to go, I don't know, 10 miles or whatever the case may be. And you have it on full power. Well, you find out later you could turn it down to 15 watts and it works just as well. Well, there's, you know, you could do that and, you know, save a little bit of um, wear and tear, so to speak, on the repeater. Uh, but usually people usually run them at full power. But those are times where you might want to do that. And you can do it easily by just turning the selector to different power levels you already pre-programmed. That's, that's what's nice about this. Uh, you know, I can make channel 1 be um, 10 watts. I can make channel 2 be uh, 15 watts. Channel 3, 25 watts. Channel uh, 4 can be the full power. So that's where it's kind of nice to be able to have those options. And you can kind of see what you need to do and what you need to be at. So, but yeah, so that, that's what's kind of some of the reasons why you might want to turn the power down. Now, I'm going to pull this cover off and I'm going to pause the video while I do this because you don't want me to watch me take the cover off. It, it's, um, you know, so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to be right back and I'm going to show you the actual wattage this thing puts out. So I'll be right back. Let, well, actually, let's, before I get too carried away, let's go ahead and show you the wattage. So let's key this up before I take this apart. Now, I do have this set to high power. I have it on a dummy load. So let's go ahead and key up. Radio check, radio check. Now, you might have, my, 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 it might have cut out my headset when I keyed up my handheld. But you can see here, it did about 34, 35 watts on high power. The radios are rated 40 watts inside. But remember, the duplex is going to suck some of that power away. So now let's go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to go ahead and pull the cover off, and we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Uh, like I said, they mounted the duplexer on, on the top lid here. If you're wondering why, I have a piece of black tape over because I'm covering up Mark's call sign. He did mark which cable did what, which is a good idea. So if he has to take it apart to do whatever, he's able to do that. Now, they did tune this to the frequency he wanted to use in his area. So now this is a smaller duplexer. So I'm going to assume, maybe I shouldn't, this is probably a 40-watt duplexer. This duplexer is only about 6 inches wide. My 50-watt duplexer that you've seen in my videos is about 8 inches wide. So that may be one of the reasons. I didn't count... Um, how many cavities this one has. Um, so I, I think it's just the wattage size difference from what it looks like. I think they're both the same number of cavities. But nevertheless, um, that's the duplexer that's in here, uh, smaller version. Now, let's go ahead and let's show you the inside of this. Now, it is two, two mobile radials, okay? Now, what they did here is, let's see if we can kind of slide this back a little bit here. Bear with me. Okay, this is, if you're wondering here, this is the back part of the repeater. This is the front up here. Now, let me slide this as much as I can. The front's up here. Now, they do have um, two mobile radios. One's going to be a receive radio. One's going to be a transmit radio. The transmit radio is the one that's going to be closest to the fan. That's why the fan's there to help blow on the transmit radio. They do have another fan that blows on the power supply to help keep the power supply cool. These fans, you can program these fans in the uh, software uh, to either come on when, they're, when, they're, when it's in transmit mode or you can program them to run all the time. Now the fans are kind of noisy, but uh, you can switch them out. Now I know Mark ordered some fans from Amazon. He's going to try some brushless ones to see if they can make it quieter. Um, now when you do switch them out if you decide to do that make sure you match the cfm rating of the fan the cfm is how much blowing power it has so you got to match that so don't put a fan in here that's lower cfm 
or it could make these items run hot. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what, how do you figure out what fan you want to, you know, you want to switch them out. What you do is, and I'm going to read the fan part number off so that you have it and you can look it up. And it's going to be uh, D as in David, F as in Frank, one two six zero two five. B as in boy, E as in Edwards. Now you can look that up, cross-reference that, get the data sheet. It will tell you how many CFMs it, those fans are. I don't remember off the top of my head, but you can look the data sheet up, and it will tell you what size fan it is. Uh, you know, so you know get the right one. But make sure the CFM matches, or you're gonna be you could run this warm if you don't have it matched. Now, this. Repeater can also be hooked up to a backup battery backup, or you can hook it up to a battery and a solar panel to have it run off the grid. So that's what's nice about these terminals. They're for a battery hookup, a 12-volt battery uh, hookup. Now, how they did this is, like I said, it's uh, two mobile radios. They're rated at 40 watts. The part number on the radios, if you're wondering, it's they're the Maxon, M-A-X-O-N, the part number is T as in Tom, M as in Mary, 8402, A as in Apple. That's the mobile radios they're using in this repeater. Now, you got two mobile radios, a power supply, a fan, and a repeater controller board, and another fan. Now, as you can tell, these mobile radios use the DB9 data ports, and they, that plugs into the repeater controller board over here. The repeater controller board also has a DB925 connector, so you can hook up external devices, which, by the way, I uh, am testing a prototype repeater interface board for Zello that's plug-and-play for this model. I'll post that video uh, link down below. So that's what how that's all pretty much is in here. Um, now, there's one advantage of doing mobile radios is that if you have a problem with your transmit radio and it doesn't transmit well, you can switch them out. You can make this be the transmit and this be the receive and just move the radios and switch them out, okay? Now, does the BridgeCom software let you do that? I didn't see anything in there, so I don't know if you have to send it back to BridgeCom to do that. I, if I recall... I think I had somebody in my Zello channel, the more I think about it now, they had to send his repeater to the uh, uh, a dealer to uh, have him reprogram the radios because he had to switch switch them out or something. But nevertheless, um, but that's you, you know nice about having the mobiles. Um, but I don't know if, I, don't, I don't know if that's in Bridgecom software. I, I'll have to look. I don't remember seeing that. So, but now how they did this is. This radio up here in front is going to be the probably the master. There's a ribbon cable that goes. Let me see if I can move my camera here better. That goes to the front panel uh, of the of the uh, the repeater itself. So this must be the master radio. That's the, the ribbon cable. And these radios don't have no fronts on them. There's no fronts. So I didn't look up this. I didn't look up the model number. I just I told you what it was, but I didn't look it up um, yet to see exactly what it is. And it does say 40 watts on here. So, um, yeah. So, and, and, you know, and I did have it up higher than 40 watts. Again, not recommended. Um, I had it pushing out about 48 watts after the duplexer. But don't do that because this is only rated 40 watts. Uh, and the duplexer is probably only rated for 40 watts, too, would be my guess, due to the size of it. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's what how I, I take it. Um, what else can I say? I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a little inside uh, information here, a little teaser. I've been kind of playing around with this repeater, uh, me and Mark have. Uh, I have it on low power, which is 10 watts. I'm using my workbench antenna, which is only about 12 feet off the air. It's a little quarter wave antenna that I made. And... Believe it or not, I got 3.6 miles on low wattage with my mobile in my car, which I thought was very well. So uh, just a little teaser. So I'm really gonna, I'm really dying to do a full distance test with this repeater 
and compare it with my better antenna. So stay tuned for that video coming up soon. any rate, uh, I believe I answered all the uh, uh, questions people may be wondering. Oh, the programming cable. Well, it's I think I think you got to buy that separately too, if I remember right. I'm going to show you. The programming cable plugs in front right here. And they, they give you a USB drive that has the software on it. So it's real easy to program. You plug it in, select your COM port, works very well. Um, other than that, I believe, um, hopefully I answered some of the questions people may have. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you, and have a good day.